Hello everybody and welcome to this second part of compositing in DaVinci Resolve 16 tutorial. If you haven't watched the first part of this tutorial, I encourage you to go back and watch it. You can access the tutorial by clicking the card above. If you don't want to watch it, you can still continue with this project, but you just have to download the asset files that, and I have provided the link in the description below. So without Further ado, let's start here. I'm in DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, I have two files. You will get the download links in the description below if you don't have them. Next, I will add a new Fusion composition. Change the duration to 25 seconds. Let's just rename it to Comp. Bring this in the timeline and let's move on to the Fusion tab. Now before we continue, I'll, I'd like to make some arrangements, right click, arrange tools, make sure you have selected to grid and in the options, make sure to check the orthogonal pipes. Now first start by bringing this media to the scene, let me see this project, I'll, I'm bringing this background as a media one, next I will go ahead immediately add a camera 3d node now this camera node won't behave like a usual camera but we want the picture to be projected in an image plane so we can turn the camera in the projector so the projector is basically a device that emits light so basically the role of this camera when we convert it to a projector will be same as the projector, real life projector. Now let's edit the settings of the camera. So we will leave everything the same in this step. We don't have to change here nothing and we may just want to make sure that in the transmittance control the lighting and shadows is enabled. Now to convert this camera to a projector we will have to go to this projection tab enable camera projection checkbox and that's all you have to do now I would like to since I'm already here I will just have would like to move this camera back in the Z plane to a value of something like this I will continue with the scene let's add a merge 3d node and we can go ahead and add a render 3D node just so that we can connect it to the media out and we can see it on the right screen. Now if I see the merge node on the left screen by hitting the number one, we have the image projected here, but we want this image to be projected in an image plane. So let's bring an image plane here. Control space, image plane 3D. Let's move this up. Now let Thus, edit the settings of the image plane. In the transmittance, we will also have the lighting and shadows enabled. And we want to change the translation, the Z property to minus 11.02. These are all of the settings that I used in the final intro that you will able to see in the beginning of this video. And now we will also change the scale. Uncheck this lock XYZ checkbox and we will add these values. Now we are done with this part. To be able to, to see the picture projected in this plane, you can go here and select the lights. And now the, the image is projected in this image plane. If you want to hide this plane over here, you can go to the camera node, go to this tab here, image tab, and uncheck the image plane. Now next we will want to add another camera since we won't be using this camera this will serve only as a projector and since we are done editing this node we can just lock it so that we don't change it accidentally. To add the animation and to see the, in the final composition we will use another camera. Let's add another camera here. I will link this to the merge node. And let's edit the camera, we'll change the focal plane to this value. Now we can move to the translation and the initial settings will be 
And now in the render, we want the render to show the what is seen from this camera, from the camera too. So that's why in the camera, we will select a camera too. We'll change the render type to OpenGL and make sure that the lighting is enabled. And now the, now the image is visible in the camera as well. Now we can continue with the bottom part or the other picture. Let's bring that to the scene. And now after that, since we want this to be shown in the 3D scene here, we need to add an image plane because we cannot show a 2D image in a, in a 3D scene unless we use an image plane 3D. So control space image plane 3D. We will add the merge 3D node here as well. Let's connect it. Let's connect it to the merge 3D one node. Actually, we don't need to connect it there. Let's delete this link. But we want this camera to affect this merge 3D node as well. We want the camera to catch this part of the scene as well. So to move the camera a little bit backwards, but I need to edit the image plane first. So let's edit this settings, go to the transform tab and change the values for the translation. And we will change the scale to 1.5. We want to add a renderer after this one as well. So select merge 3D2 node and add a render, another render. We are adding another render because it differentiates in some settings from the renderer above. This render is used to render the projected file and this render will not use projection but we will we will show the real images and the files from the first part like the fire and the smoke effects so that's why we are add adding a new renderer here now let's edit the settings of this second renderer we will select this the camera to be this camera for that render as well then we will change the OpenGL render, but we don't need to enable the lighting and shadows anymore. And in the texturing, we must change this to quick sort. You saw that in the previous part because the quick sort shows a more realistic transparency, which is required for the fire and the smoke effects. Now let's merge these two renders into one, and we will connect this to media out. If you don't see the other picture, Control T to show it so that we change the, we swap the inputs. Let's move this camera here and bring it back to the, to the scene so that everything is shown. Now we have both of the images visible in the camera. Next thing I would like to add is let's work with this picture over here. It has very harsh edges to make those edges blend better in this scene. We will add a matte control, so select the media, media N2 node, control space, and search for matte control. And for the matte controls, we will have this settings. Go to the blend. And one thing, we need to check this past multiply image. And now if I disable this node, see the, the differences here. So check this screen over here. If I disable this node, you can see these edges. They are very harsh, very hard edges. And now if we enable that, the edges are more, more blurry and they fit better onto the screen. I mean, after that, to make this image to blend more to the scene, we will add the color corrector. So select the matte control node. Control space, search for color corrector, and for the color corrector, we will add these settings. Make sure you change this range to midtones, and we will edit the contrast, the gain. We'll change the gamma, and that's all. So, again, if I disable this, this is what we have. If I enable it, you see the difference if you look in the screen. So again, disable the color corrector node, enable it. To 
enable or disable the color, color corrector node, the alternative shortcut is Ctrl P. Now one other node that is very important here is to add the soft clip node. So the soft clip node is if we move the camera closer to this image you see there is no fade in effect here but it looks like the image is, is blocking the whole camera to make this look more realistic. Through the image plane 3D node I will add a soft clip node. Edit the settings of the soft clip, put 1.339 for the opaque distance and for the transparent distance add 0 0.551. Now if I move the camera closer to, the, to this image, see that you get the transparency. As closer as the camera goes to this image, the image gets transparent and again this is all done just to have the scene this image blend better with the whole animation. So now if I disable the soft clip, this is what you will get if you move the camera through the, the image. And if I enable it, this is the effect. So this looks much, much better for this animation and you can use it in other projects as well. Now we need to go and add a Fog 3D node. The Fog 3D node will be added after the Merge 3D1 node. So select Merge 3D1 node, control space, add the Fog 3D node. Now let's edit the settings of the Fog 3D node and make sure that it is enabled and add this color. Add 0.89 for all of the red, green and blue values here, the type will be linear and we will change the far plane to 13.9 or the far distance to 13.9. And again, let's, let me disable this node and enable it and you can see that we added a fog to the scene. So we simulate a fog that it was caused by the too much smoke and fire happening all the around of the area. Now. We are almost done with this thing. We can now go ahead and add the fire and the smoke from the previous part or from the compositing in DaVinci Resolve part one. I've already saved that in my templates. So I will go ahead in the effects library in the templates, that my templates and bring, bring the fire par particles in the nodes. I need to delete these three nodes here because I they are not required. We need to merge them to the Merge 3D2 node, all of the particles. And next, we show two screens. Next, we will have to bring them to the scene. So I will go quickly and do that. Select the Pmeter node. Now the third is the smoke particles. This needs to go right under the person wearing a gas mask. So make sure that you bring it here and it, it needs to cover the camera view. And in this render, make sure that the pre-generated frames are to 100. And now let's just render this one of the first 150 frames but I would like to edit this pre-render node as well I will I would like to pre-generate the the fire so that it already starts already shown in the scene and now we are done with this part as well next we'd like to add a vignette in this scene so that, so that we get that orange look to the scene, like the fire is all around the scene. Go to the merge one node, control space and add a vignette node. And now in the vignette settings, we need to change the size. The anamorphism, change the color to these values. 
also change the softness, change the colors to these values. And the blend options too. And now we have this the final scene. We have before we, we go to, to the final rendering, we also need to animate the camera 3D node. So select the camera, go to frame zero and add the settings. So we want the camera to start from the back of the scene closer to this house over here and then move backwards. So we just to do that we just need to edit the Z option in the transform tab. Let's edit this to minus 5 and we need to add a keyframe here then you will go around frame 150 maybe here add a keyframe and we will change the Z we will change the Z value to minus zero and we have to go to the spline window so that we smooth the animation select both of these endpoints shift s to smooth it and move this up so that the animation of the camera starts a bit faster and it slows down as it arrives to the ending of the animation and now to close the spline I will go to the edit tab and to add that film look to this whole scene we will go to the timeline change the output blanking to 2.35 and this gives those black boxes on top and the bottom of the scene so that we achieve that film or cinematic aspect ratio and let's play it from the beginning Okay guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever I publish a new video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I would like to hear your opinion. If you want more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, I have a full playlist which you can access by clicking the card above. And yeah, we are finishing this tutorial and with you guys, see you next time. Bye.